Let's talk. Top five worst things about being in a band. If you're familiar with my YouTube channel, you know me as a music teacher and as someone who makes videos about music related stuff. What you may not know is that for about 10 years of my life, I was like so many young musicians, working hard, trying to make it big in a band. In the end, I failed, but I learned a lot along the way and that's what I wanna share with you today. Let's get right into it. Number one, buying expensive music gear. When you're in a band, it feels like you have no choice but to spend tons of your hard-earned money on stuff for playing in a band. You'll spend money on cases to carry instruments around. If you're a drummer, you'll spend money on stands to hold up stuff you bought. And you'll spend money on stuff to plug stuff into other stuff. It's never ending. You will spend money. And the crazy thing is, you really never make that money back. And I can remember so many of my friends having money to spend on other things like, you know, Xboxes or games and, you know, on their cars. And me, where's my money going? It's going into stuff like this and, you know, stuff like that. Stuff to play music. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just something that maybe you don't think about when you get into a band. You're going to be spending a lot of money. Number two hauling heavy gear around. So after you've spent all this money on all of your expensive gear, guess what you get to do next? Yep, that's right. You get to carry it around. If you're the guitar player, it doesn't sound that bad because you know, you only have your guitar. But guess what else you have? You probably have your giant half stack. Now this one at least, it's got wheels, but a lot of them don't. And even if it does have wheels, you gotta pick it up, and put it in your car. Fortunately, I used to drive a convertible, so it wasn't so bad. I just pick it up and put it in. But really, it helps if you have a van or something like that. Now, if you're the drummer, you have it worst because you got to carry all your drums and all your cymbals, plus all your stands. And trust me, if you buy good ones, these things are not light. So get used to carrying these around a lot, or like we did, try to pay somebody a few dollars to help you. Of course, there goes your money from your show. We'll get into that later. Now, while you're spending all this money on your stuff, you're gonna try to save a few dollars because you only have so much to go around. You know, when you're in a band, you gotta buy, you gotta buy guitars, you gotta buy guitar amplifiers, you gotta buy guitar effects pedals. If you're the drummer, you know, you got all your drum stuff and maybe you have some drum mics. And then, if you're like me, we ended up spending money on PA systems because we thought it was a good idea to play shows where sometimes we'd have to bring our own PA. So what we would do is we would go down to the secondhand music store and we'd try to find the cheapest PA system that we could find. And what's cheap? Something old and heavy. So that's what you do. You try to buy the cheapest thing you can, which means it's also the heaviest thing that they sell. And then you and your buddies are hauling around this heavy gear through the tiniest alleys in your city. I guarantee you, wherever you're playing, it is gonna be the tiniest alley you've ever seen, trust me. Sure, it's fun playing shows with your buddies, but carrying the heavy stuff around, that's not so much fun. Number three, having to self-promote. This is one of the things that really drove me to quit performing because after a while, you just get really tired of having to go around and try to convince other people that they should listen to your music and that you have something worthwhile. Everything that you read and everybody that you talk to will tell you the same thing. Self-promotion, self-promotion, self-promotion. You've got to get out there and beat the streets and tell everybody about your music and make it so that they can't ignore it. After a while, that just really gets old. I can't tell you how embarrassing it is for me when I look back that I was that guy. Every second word was about my band, trying to tell people and trying to get people to go listen to our music and go on our webpage. And the truth is, they didn't care. And I understand why they didn't care because they have a friend who's in a band too. And they probably got three friends that are in a band and they're all trying to do the same thing. They're all competing for everybody's attention. There's an overabundance of musicians and there's actually a dearth of listeners. So cutting through the noise means shamelessly putting yourself out there 
and bothering people who really are just trying to go out there, go about their daily business. Talking to people who are waiting in the line for other concerts or going out to the local mall like we used to do and just bothering people who are on their way to the food court. Like, hey, have you heard about my band? Here's a CD, check it out. That got old really quick for me. All I wanted to do after a while is just do a job where I would do a thing for somebody that they needed instead of having to convince them to let me do something that I wanted to do. Number four, after you've bought your gear and you've done all that shameless self-promotion, what's the next thing you gotta do? Well, you gotta set up shows, because you gotta play, right? Yeah, you gotta play. And your first show isn't gonna be that hard because everybody's curious about what you got and they wanna go out and see you and you know see what you sound like. So that's not gonna be a big deal. Probably 50 people, maybe 100 people will easily come out and hear you. Those are mostly your friends. They're curious, they wanna know what you sound like. So, show number one, down, no problem. Now comes the big problem. Show number two, number three, number four. Your friends know what you sound like. Even if they like you, they've heard you several times. So now you gotta figure out how to sell 100 tickets. That's what it was for us. Yeah, don't laugh, 100 tickets. I know it's not a lot, but when you've exhausted your fan base, which when you're starting out is small, it's a very big deal. Because then, because what you do is you call up a venue and you say, hey, I want you to book us for a show. And they say, sure, can you sell 100 tickets? And you say, absolutely, we can sell 100 tickets. Sure, no problem. Okay, then you gotta figure out what to do with 100 tickets. So what do you do? You call everybody that you know. You say, hey, we got the show on Saturday the 26th. And they say, oh no, I can't do that. I'm washing my dog that day. And they say, oh no, I can't do that. My parents are on fire. I have to go put them out. So you end up stuck with like 50 tickets that you can't sell and you're going out to the mall and trying to talk to new people, trying to make new fans. You're going and working the lines at shows, trying to get people into your music and sell them tickets. Me, I drove out to some random house at two in the morning because somebody texted me and said they wanted tickets. So I was so desperate to sell the tickets, I went out there because I was so desperate to get rid of them. And what do you end up doing? You have like 15 tickets that you can't sell and you buy them yourself. After a while, you get so tired of doing this that you know you, you just begin to hate it. You really begin to hate setting up shows. If I heard that somebody from my band had called Ram's Head and set up a show for us, had called a big venue and set up a show for us, I'd be like, why? Why did you do this? We just had a big show. I can't get the same people to come out to this show. After a while, it just becomes too much. You can't have one big show and then maybe a month later have another big show and expect that same group of people to come out. It just doesn't work like that. They've all heard you. You gotta come up with something else, which leads you back to the shameless self-promoting and the never-ending quest to try to get people who are not really interested in your music, who are just going about their business to pay attention to your music when they've already got five other bands trying to tell them about their music. Number five, working hard and not really getting paid for it. So yes, when you're in a band, you do get paid for your shows. I mean, you know, we played a show one time where we probably got paid like a thousand bucks, but split four ways, that's only 250. But then that money, where does that go? For every dollar you make, there's something that you need. You know, you need new heads for your drums, new guitar strings for your guitar. You gotta pay for the CDs that you had pressed. You gotta pay for that guy that did your logo. You gotta pay the photographer that did your photos. Maybe have somebody at your live show that's doing photos for you. You gotta pay them. There's so much and so many people right there ready to take your money once you earn it. So $1,000 goes in, $1,500 goes out. So being in a band for me was never profitable. Maybe for other people it is profitable, but just my experience was I always paid money to do my music. We never really made that money back, ever. So that's it, that's my five worst things about being in a band. Really. Would I do it again? Of course I would. It was amazing and overall, it was a really valuable experience that I'm still really glad that I had. 
In the future, I'm going to do a video on the five best things about being in a band. So look out for that. If you're into my silly music videos that I make, don't worry, I will be doing more of those. This is a little change of pace because I can't do one of those videos all the time. It takes a really long time and I don't get around to it that often because I do have a job. But this is just something kind of in the meantime to keep the channel going and participate with you guys. So I hope you liked it. Stay tuned. I got more coming. All right. Bye.